Hello again, explorers, and welcome back to New Discoveries on the Perea Plateau. At the end of the last episode, I left you hanging with a teaser about a major new discovery. And since you've endured a long wait while I put this episode together, I want to make it up to you by giving you the grand finale first. And then, I'll take you out on the hike where I found it. Sound like a deal? But before I reveal this really sweet discovery, I think you need some context to understand what you're about to see. So here's a brief history of the wave and white pocket. These are the crown jewels of the Perea Plateau that are world famous, and yet both were virtually unknown until recently. Is that even possible in our modern world where every square inch of the USA is visible in detailed satellite images? I guess so. The Perea Plateau is one of the least explored parts of the United States. It stands 3,000 feet above Marble Canyon and is hemmed in by steep cliffs on three sides. On the west side, only three roads go up there, and all are difficult, requiring four-wheel drive. Indians have lived up there, leaving evidence of their presence in petroglyphs and pottery. Ranchers started raising goats and cattle out there in the last century, up until about the 1960s. Michael Kelsey has talked to some of the ranchers and their descendants. They didn't seem too interested in the rock formations, though, because they had other things on their mind, like survival. A few ranches are still active, but it's pretty lonely up there. In the late 1980s or early 1990s, I don't remember when, I went to a slideshow by a hiker who had just been to Coyote Buttes. We were blown away by his photos, but he wouldn't tell us where it was. He was afraid its delicate features would be damaged if overrun by hikers. A secret like this was too good to keep, though, and by the mid-1990s, word was leaking out. A German filmmaker named G. Lobmeyer found it and added footage of it to his documentary, Fascinating Nature. It created a sensation. Almost instantly, German tourists were flocking to Arizona to see the wave. The Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, clamped down on visitation to protect it, limiting it to 20 hikers a day using a lottery system that is still in effect. North Coyote Buttes, the home of the wave, was the most popular, but South Coyote, with similar features, also fell under the permit system, even though it was harder to get to. I hiked to the wave in 2001 and again in 2008, but these days it's very difficult to win the lottery for a permit. The Perea Plateau was declared Vermilion Cliffs National Monument in 2000, but is managed by the BLM, which has done very little to develop it outside of running the permit system for Coyote Buttes. Now get this, it wasn't until 2005 that word got out about another exciting outcrop six miles to the east called White Pocket. That's recent history, folks. Now the place is swarming with visitors. On any given day, you can find five or six tour companies out there with vans loaded with Germans, Americans, Asians, and others wanting to see it. World-class photographers have plastered the internet with fantastic photos of these famous places. But what lay beyond? Very few people have ventured farther east into the interior of the plateau. Michael Kelsey produced the best accounts in his book, which he updated with more recent trips in 2016. He documented many points of interest in the central and southern parts of the plateau. After my first jaunts into White Pocket in 2009 and 2010 with Steve Dotson of Perea Outfitters, I got interested in the frontier out there, but there was almost nothing on the internet about it. I got my first four-wheeler in 2014. The next spring, I followed Perea Outfitters to a remote part on the southeast of the plateau called Soap Creek Tank, where they had just started taking visitors. Feeling more confident of my off-roading skills by then, I toured most of the sites that Michael Kelsey wrote about. I didn't see another soul for three days till returning to White Pocket, where I found a substantial number of people camping. In 2016, I toured more of Kelsey's sites including Steamboat Rock, a large but rarely visited butte. It wasn't until May 2017 that I ventured out on my own into Terra Incognita, parts of the plateau with absolutely no information or photos online. That's when I found Rather Domes, Sky Pocket, and Secret Pocket, as shown in the earlier episodes of this series. When I got home from that trip, 
I looked at Google Earth, which had been showing more detail over the years, and noticed that on my hike to Sky Pocket, I had missed the best part. At the end of the ridge I call Forked Tongue, the terrain looked like it must be outstanding but I wouldn't get back for another year to find out. Finally, on May 24th, 2018, a friend and I hiked out there. Now that you've seen Coyote Buttes and White Pocket and heard how popular they become, are you ready to see what might become the next hot ticket out there? I call it the Lost City. Take a look. This is big. You're seeing it from 400 yards away. Those juniper trees down there are taller than a hiker. This highly decorated and colorful outcrop is some 500 yards long and 300 yards wide, comparable to White Pocket. The smallest domes appear to be 20 feet high and the largest is about 200 feet tall. I think it's like White Pocket on steroids. I'm going to take you there now and show you what it was like to discover this place. But don't even think of quitting now, because the Lost City is just one of five, count it, five fascinating spots in the same area. Ready? Put on your day pack and let's go discover the Lost City. <laughs>